So at center, I would take Sidney Crosby, hands down. Love the guy. Love every single thing about his game. Um, I love the fact that he's like so competitive. He's so skilled. You'll see him and, and you'll see him battle and compete. I was just thinking about one of the quotes after an interview. There was like a big battle in Philadelphia and stuff. And they asked him an interview. And after the game, he goes, I don't like them. I don't like any of those guys. Like he's so competitive. Yeah. And it was like uh, he wasn't even going to try to pretend to be nice. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But anyways, he's so skilled. He's uh, been uh, he's been a star from day one. And what I love about him is he continues to work on his game, even though he was a star. So this is one of the things like, you know, when when kids have a chance to 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 work after practice or whatever, it's like the best one of the best players ever to play the game. Uh, you know, years ago, he was uh, felt like his face offs weren't good enough. And he spent every day after practice working on face offs. Then he became one of the better ones in face offs in the league. Mm-hmm. But he said, there's a gap I need to fix. So competitive, he needs to be the best at everything. I love watching him battle in corners. I love, love watching him battle through players, you know, going to the net. And, you know, he'll be taking slashes. He'll be taking uh, taking hits. He'll be having two, three guys hooking him, and his feet are still moving. You love watching him coming out of corners, protecting pucks, making plays, shooting the puck. That backhand that's off the charts good. That's crazy. Like, all of these yeah. things you put together, and it's, like, it's incredible. And I just love the fact that, like, the second effort, man. Mm-hmm. That's what I, like, that's what I find separate so many players is is just the that will to to never give up and you know on loose pucks or whatever it's that second effort going to the net and you're still whacking at it uh, it's like brendan gallagher it's that second third effort that makes all the difference in the world and this is the, the one of the most extreme talented players ever to play the game i love it the other thing i like about this guy is uh i, I said that uh that he continues to work on his game which is great but the other thing i like is that you don't hear anything about Sidney Crosby. Yeah. He's he's learned to, like, obviously he's got some good parents or people around him that, uh, or maybe he's just really smart. But you don't hear any bullshit in the, so, you, does he have social media? No. I don't know. He doesn't know. He doesn't have social media. Yeah. He's not worried about that kind of stuff. He's just strictly focused on doing what he's supposed to do. Yeah. And uh, I, I now listen, I, I'm positive that he goes out and has a good time, just like mm-hmm. anybody else. But no one's going to see it. Right, he's got a whatever his policies are. He goes out there, and nobody knows that uh, if he if he drinks ten beers, you don't know if he has a girlfriend, a boyfriend, a dog friend. Like what you don't know. <laughs> yeah. He just his life is private, and he's just focused on his uh, thing. So he can't be a bad example to people, to the kids and stuff like that. He just he's he's the best to me. He's just the best. Yeah. If I was to put anyone on the ice, I want Sidney Crosby. Yeah, I agree. I the night the reason I like. Because like I said at the start, you're talking about including a guy like McDavid or whatever on. The reason Crosby's more interesting to me is because he's played now for 15 years yeah. where or more, actually, where you can yeah. you can look back on his career and how he's developed and how his game has changed. Yeah. And he reminds me, I wasn't necessarily old enough to pay attention, but it reminds me of my guy growing up that I liked with Steve Eiserman, how he had that shift from ultra skilled talent to uh, he's a winner and he's a leader, right? right? So he still has all that skill, but now he's a winner and now he's a leader. Yeah. And this is why I will go toe to toe on a conversation <laughs> with like Crosby over McDavid any day. Yeah. Crosby's the guy because he's he's a proven winner. It's not just about his personal skill. If we're taking all things considered, not just how fast or how flashy are the points, but does this guy actually fully encompass what it means to be a professional hockey player? And Crosby, hands down, he's had he's like stood the test of time. He's never involved in a scandal ever away from the rink. I don't know one thing about this guy's personal. I don't know what car nope. he drives. I don't know where nope. he lives. I don't know what his house looks like. And maybe you can find some of those details. And just watch his watching his game evolve to not just being the guy that goes through everyone and scores. Yeah. But like blocking a shot, getting in a fight, winning all his face offs, his plus minus through the roof, like all these different things that make him just such a great example of what the optimal professional hockey player is, but from his game on the ice to his training off the ice to his behavior away from hockey, all of that stuff is just, he couldn't be a better example. And that's why he's a more, he's a more interesting person to look at because he's, played and maybe mcdavid in 15 years will be like that where he's yeah, has a similar who knows, story who knows for me for now this guy is is incredible no what question. i what i what i love what i love about him is that you know like everyone says he's the hardest working guy in the gym on the ice and it's not just words he's he's like like i said 
uh, I think it was Mike Rupp talking about it. He played with him in Pittsburgh. I think it was him saying, you know, Sidney Crosby is the best guy in the world. And he decided that his face-offs needed a lot of work. And it was, he'd spend every practice either yeah. before or after doing face-off after face-off after face-off. Like, that's a little detail. Like, if he, he could have just said, well, I'm good enough. Yeah. But, like, that's tedious. Yeah. But yeah. That, that's little details that make him that much better. But I just love that, that work ethic, man. It's incredible. So any guy that thinks thinks that you're doing more or doing a lot is you have to look at the best of the best. And this is what's interesting, right? You take someone that is so talented because, like, whether people want to believe it or not, I, I, he was a, a, a phenom coming up as a kid. Yeah, he was a great Scoring man. ridiculous yeah. goals. So his – his, you probably have never seen a player like that in your life. Well, that's the stupid statement. No one's seen a player like that in his life. He so, could skate, he just had, had pure skill. So he would have made it on pure skill and had a good career anyways. But to see the effort that he puts in. So if you're a player that is kind of skilled or sort of skilled and you're not doing the work that he's putting in, you don't have a chance. You got the guy with that much skill and talent and doing the work. You have no chance against a guy like that. Yep. You never you can never be that. So like if you're a middle of the pack guy or like a really good prospect or whatever coming up, if you don't have that work ethic then you just can't even compete in the same area as this guy. Yeah, for right? sure. It's huge. Yeah. And that's what that's why I like him as an example. More than more than just his on the ice play is like looking what he does everywhere outside of the game. That's where I think you can learn the most from a guy like that, right? Because there's a lot of guys that are super skilled. You look at Crosby-level Crosby players, McDavid, Ovechkin, Matthews, whoever you want. They all are so skilled. You can learn a lot from their game, yeah. But this guy, particularly away from his actual performance in the game, there's so much there that you can pick from that other guys don't have. you know. And that's why he's obviously a good one to, to include on the list. Yeah. So, could I go to next? Yep. So, wingers, I picked Tom Wilson, one of my favorite players in the NHL. Love him. Mo a lot of people hate him, and I think it's either a love-hate relationship. Um, so, that's that. First round in the NHL. He was a second-round pick in the OHL to Plymouth Whalers. Played a couple years in the minors. But what, here's what I think about Tom Wilson. Big guy. He is big, and he is a problem. That's what I would say. He is a problem. He is a freaking nightmare. And he makes an impact in every single game. So, like, and that's and, and that's a big statement. He is a nightmare. And and um, here's where he's here's where he's why he's so good. He uh, he's obviously physical, and I I don't think he just hits to hit. I think he actually doesn't mind hurting people. Mm -hmm. And that's a that's an issue. That is an issue. Now that's the my, people might say, well, that's not right. That's you know, you shouldn't try to hurt people. Well, he does. <laughs> he does. And if you're playing against him, then you have to have that in the back of your mind that he's coming down the railroad tracks. And he might feel like throwing an elbow in your face and ruining your life. Oh, well. But that's that's the nightmare that he is. But also, he can make plays and he can score goals. I remember there was a game in Toronto. I think it was last year. It was like a classic Tom Wilson. I, I believe he ran over a couple guys, like bad. Got in a fight, kicked the kicked the snot out of whoever it was, and then got just like a couple, one or two. He got the game winner, I believe, but he got a couple, um, couple goals that were just like to put that knife right in there and then yeah. twist it. And I think he's from Toronto, but like the, everyone hated him. Yep. But it's like that guy made the biggest impact in the game. And so you get sometimes you get a power forward that throws some hits, and that's a, that's an impact and that can fight, but. Rarely do you see a guy that could put 20, 30 goals in year after year and, and be able to, and takes care of his own business. Like he's not starting shit and waiting for someone else to finish it. He's always, um, he's always finishing. So not fun to play against at all. That guy is not fun to play against at all. That is what you call a nightmare. And uh, how many teams would like Tom Wilson on their team? As much as everyone says, yeah. you know, he's dirty, whatever. It's just you don't know what you're going to get, right? From as a, as an opposition, you don't know what you're going to get. It might be a clean hit. He might throw a knee out. Who, you know, he might get a little bit. He'll cross that line for sure. Um, his biggest thing that I don't even know it's a, if it's a detriment, like because he he he's always on the on crossing the line of getting suspended. 
So, but that's like part of the mystique. That's this part is, of the thing that yeah. makes you go, gee, you don't know where he's going to go. That's why he's scary, right? Yeah. Because there guys that guys that are tough and play clean. It's one thing. Yeah. But if there's that little element of it's like it's like cast, right? It's like this guy's got a screw loose. Like I don't know, this guy might bite me when we're fighting. Like I don't know what he's gonna do, right? So that unpredictability of what he's gonna do, that brings the next tier of of um fear to whoever he's playing against. And it's not just like a Brad Marchant where he's like cheap and dirty. It's like he plays a little bit dirty, but he's actually tough. And he's actually big and plays hard. So it's like he still gets the respect. He where, can hurt you. Yes. Where it's like <laughs> other guys that kind of like the Sean Avery types that just run around and might throw a cheap shot. They don't have the same level of respect because it's like you're not actually tough. You're just cheap. Right. So if you get a guy like this, who he's 6'4", 220. The guy's a mammoth person. He plays seriously tough and he's a little bit reckless. So it's like you have to watch out for this guy, which that is part of the game. And it comes with its negatives. I'm not saying there's no negative to that. Could cost the team, could get a bad penalty, could be suspended, could really hurt someone. Like all those are not great things. But for the style of play that he has, that's plays right into into his role. And then the most important thing to me is that he still plays hockey. Yeah, yeah. Big right. Time. So he's not your old school, you're the good for nothing outside of fighting, right? He actually plays. So this is what I, we've we said when we answered that question. Guys are talk asking us about power forwards, like what are some tips for power forwards and Tom Wilson's a great example of not don't put yourself in the box of you just have to play rough and tough straight lines and finish your hits yes you have to do that but if you have an opportunity to do something in the game playing the game then do that and that's you can see that in his stats like he still gets his 20 goals 20 assists every year like he's putting 40 50 points up for the last however many five six years yeah but with his, his 100, 100 to 200 yeah, pims. His value, right? like that's a good player putting up those points, but his value is right. much, much, much more than that. Like impacts every single game. Yeah. And the, the thing is, is that if you're going, like he's injured this year, he got, uh, what is it, hip? Yeah, he's, he's off the roster. Yeah. How many times, every, every time someone's playing Washington Capitals, they're looking down the lineup, they're just, God, there's a night off. Yeah. Right. There's a, there's a night man. off. 100%. There's Absolutely. a night off from this guy. Yeah. Yeah, I remember, the I remember presence when, is when gone. last year when uh, uh, Jack I played in the OHL. It was like Same when thing. he every time he got suspended, you think the other teams weren't going. Oh, thank God! Yeah, I don't need this. I don't have to deal man. with him tonight. Yeah, yep. you know, Absolutely. his chirps, his stare, his yeah, whatever, just going me. in the corner, yeah. oh, questioning yeah. how hard am I going to go in that corner tonight? Mm-hmm. Right. So that's Absolutely, they, they get right in your head. Yeah. Without yep. doing a thing. That's how much yep. of an impact they have. So again, just going to point out the contrast, you go from Crosby to Tom Wilson, mm-hmm. right? So this might be another like interesting way of thinking about it. I've said this before. We both said this before, but how many Crosbys can you have on your team? One. You can't really have like three Crosbys because there's not enough ice for three Crosbys. There's not that role can only be filled by one or two guys. Like if you go on, on Edmonton, you got, you got McDavid and, and Dreisaitl. It's like, I can't really have another one of those guys on our team. One, because I probably can't afford it. And two, there's not enough puck touches for all these guys now, right? So these other roles are necessary, you know? So you get a guy like Tom Wilson that can come in or a guy that plays like Cass or whoever that's that type of player. They bring a different element. They don't need to have the puck all game, you know? So you throw a guy like that on the wing with, with your better players because they can play in that role. If you're going in, in, into a tough game where they they're normally on your top players, it's like okay, I'll put I'll put Tommy Tom Wilson with my top two guys, and we'll see how much you go after my top guy now, right? And so if you're a, a guy that maybe you're a little bit bigger or you play a little bit more physical, you don't necessarily even have to be bigger, but if you play a little bit more physical, here's a guy that you can try to be, and then you don't have to score. 50 goals a year like this is the other thing right i remember you were talking to chris draper about him kind of changing his role from being an offensive player to a defensive player and i think if i correct me if i'm wrong he said when they were playing the world juniors he had to shadow yager like he was lined up with Norman yager and he was just his job was to shut him down and now he didn't have to score all these goals and get all these points and that's actually in a way an easier job because it's like you if you don't score your 30 40 50 goals you're not going to get traded or cut or sat or whatever. It's like now you just need to play a hard defensive game and it's not dependent on you to be the guy that can score the goals. And that's 
better suited for certain types of players, right? So if you're a Tom Wilson, if he's the guy that you're banking on to get 40 goals, he's not going to do it. But he has that. But he has that other thing where he can he can play the rough yeah. and tough and open up space for those other guys, and that's yeah. like an essential well, thing you want to the, have. The right? thing with a guy like Tom Wilson is. He might not have maybe a, a game where he's touching the puck a whole lot, but he can change the game in That's an right. instant with a huge hit right. or a huge hit or a fight yeah. or whatever. And it just uh, changes it and, and, mm-hmm. and all that stuff. I wonder-